from Learning the Harp and today we're going to learn to play some glissandos. Now glissandos are a wonderful thing to learn especially when you're early on in your harp playing because they sound so impressive but they're actually not that difficult to play. So if you have your harp sitting there in your room and someone says oh I heard you started playing the harp you can do some of these wonderful glissandos and they will just be so impressed maybe they'll even fall over with how impressed they are <laughs> and you won't even have to play anything for them because it's actually so easy so grab your harp i'm going to take you through it and by the end of this you're going to be an expert in glissandos <laughs> The first glissando we're going to learn today is an upwards glissando that sounds like this. Beautiful! And it's so easy to do. So we've got to get our hand into the right position. Normally when we pluck we point our fingers down and our thumb up. But now for this glissando we're going to point that index finger straight forward and the thumb pointing straight up like if you're pretending pew pew pew. <laughs> okay and um, we're going to be pulling on the strings differently to how we normally play. Normally we point downwards and we kind of end up um, putting our finger so that the, the string goes kind of diagonally across your finger. But now we're going to make it so that the string goes straight across your finger. Um, so that means you need to put your hand so that the palm is facing the harp instead of facing kind of down like it normally would be. Um, facing the harp so you turn your hand sideways and you're going to be pulling your fingers straight across the strings like that and you've got to dig in quite a bit dig in and pull it all the way up but what we don't want to have is when you're pulling it up and then you kind of end up with your hand trapped like this let me show you with the other hand if it got got kind of trapped you end up with what I call like an ostrich arm. So it's like the head of the ostrich. <laughs> um, so that's not good. We don't want to be trapped. So instead, what we do when we do this glissando is we lead with our elbow, kind of like you're pulling a bow and arrows. So you, you lead, the, the elbow comes upwards and it pulls the hand backwards. So let's think about that as we play our glissando. So put your thumb up, finger pointing straight out. You have your palm facing the strings. You dig into those strings and then you pull your elbow back. Let's try it again. So you can hear my glissando is quite nice and even and that comes from a bit of practice. What you might find at first is that yours sounds a bit more like this. Or maybe not quite that bad but it's going to sound uneven at first and that's totally fine and totally normal. You just need to practice doing it, trying to get it as even as possible and you're going to get there. You can start anywhere on your harp and kind of go all the way up. So start somewhere near the bottom, go all the way up. Now let's try it with the left hand. So same thing, thumb up, finger pointing straight out. You're going to have your palm facing the harp and remember to lead with your elbow pulling back. Dig into those strings and you're going to have your finger quite stiff. Um, so that you can really dig in and get a good sound. We don't want just a surface sound like this. That's not what we're looking for. We're going to dig in, get a nice deep tone and try and make it as even as possible. The next glissando we're going to do is a nice long downwards glissando where we use our thumb and it sounds like this. So this is a similar concept to what we did with our finger. Um, we're going to turn our thumb, instead of it plucking up, like kind of up on the string like this, we're gonna pull our elbow out, turn our thumb so that it's horizontal, like similar to the floor, parallel to the floor, and we push forwards like this. So we start with our elbow out and we push down. So let's do that. And you want it to try and be nice and even and like a medium speed, not too fast. Now if you have a lap harp or a harp that's a lot lighter than mine, you may find that as you're pushing, your harp starts wanting to fall forwards. 
And if that's the case, you may just need to hold onto your soundboard while you do the downloads glissando. That's just how it happens with some smaller harps. Now let's try it with the left hand. So get that elbow nice and high and then push down. Dig into those strings. See if you can get it nice and even. Very good. Now when we're practicing these glissandos, we really want to try and get it as controlled as possible. So to do that, I suggest that you practice doing it with different speeds, um, different dynamics, louds and softs, and um, see if you can get exactly the control you want. So for example, I'm going to try doing an upwards glissando and see if I can make it last for three counts. One, two, three. Okay, I kind of ran out a little bit at the end there. Let's try it again. One, two, three. And now I'm going to try doing one that lasts for four counts. One, two, three, four. So I had to do it a little bit slower that time. Maybe now I'm going to try doing one that's the same, same um, length of glissando, but only do it in two counts. One, two. I kind of went a bit fast and then slow and fast and then slow, so I would have to practice that. Let's try it again. One, two. That was better. So you can practice getting control by making different speed glissandos, and maybe you want to do a really soft one. And then a really loud one. And see if you can get them all even and smooth, no matter how loud or soft and no matter how fast or slow. Now here's a trick. If you have all your levers and you want to make your glissando sound extra magical, here's something you can do. Um, and it's going to make the glissandos, instead of sounding like a, a scale, like this. Instead, it's going to sound way more magical and kind of like a chord, like this. So much better! So what you need to do to get that magical sound is to set your levers so that our harp makes a pentatonic scale instead of a normal diatonic scale. You don't really need to know what those words mean. Let me just tell you how to do it. So if your harp is tuned in the key of C, like mine is at the moment, when you, do, when you play each note C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, it's going to sound like that, like a nice major scale. If your harp is tuned in the key of C like mine, like that with all the levers down, then you're going to have all your levers down except you put your E levers and B levers up. All the way across the harp. And then you get that magical sound. So lovely! If your harp is tuned in the key of E flat, like this harp is at the moment, it will sound like this. When you pluck each string from the E upwards, they'll sound like this. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. So that sounds happy like a major scale. So if your harp is tuned in E flat, then you need to put up your D and G levers, all your D and G levers. And then you get that magical sound on this harp. The third type of glissando I'm going to show you today is what I call an overlapping glissando. And it sounds like this. kept my harp with the levers up in that pentatonic magical scale for the moment, but um, you can totally do this even if you don't have levers. Yours will just sound a little different to mine. So what we want to do is we start with the one hand and go a little way up, and just before we finish with that hand, we start with the other hand a little lower and go a little bit further up, and then you start with the other hand a little way back. So it's kind of like going two steps forwards, one step back, two yeah, two steps forward, one step back, two steps forwards, one step back, that kind of idea. And I like to think of it as kind of overlapping each other. So a little way up, then start from lower down and go a little way up, then start from lower down and go a little way up. That's kind of a slow motion version. So let's try that again. And you can also do that on the way down. So you start with the thumb and then the other thumb goes a little way back. So 
this thumb goes a little way, the other one starts from higher, and then the other one, and then the other one, and you're swapping between the hands like that. So let's try that a little faster on the way down. And it doesn't really sound nice to end that one just at the bottom, I think. So if I'm gonna do a downwards one, I like to then change direction and go up again. So we're going downwards. And then when I get to the point where it doesn't feel so comfortable anymore, then I start going up with the other hand and then do that. And then I do the overlapping one on the way up. So let's try that again. We're going to go down and then we're going to start with the, when we get to a certain point where it doesn't feel so comfortable, then we swap the one hand and then start doing the overlapping glissando on the way up. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be a certain number of times that you overlap or a certain number of distance of strings that you go. You're kind of just going to let your ear guide you. Try it over and over and just see what sounds good. And eventually you'll get your own style and it will just be like a little flourish you can do. <laughs> the fourth kind of glissando we're going to learn today is what I like to call infinity glissandos. And that's because you kind of make like an infinity sign. You know that one that's kind of like an eight but on its side. <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing and we do this glissando or I do it just with my right hand um, so now as we're doing a normal glissando we're kind of going downwards you might have noticed as we go down the hop we're going downhill and as we come up the hop we're coming uphill because we kind of want to stay in the middle of our strings but with this infinity glissando as you're going downwards you get to a point kind of near the end of, of your harp strings where you're going to start going uphill uphill more and then you're going to open up your finger and start coming around and then you start the bottom of that infinity sign with your finger and then you come uphill like you normally would for a glissando and when you get near the top you start going extra uphill to make the top of that infinity sign and you're going to try and, and then you bring your thumb onto the strings and you try and make a smooth transition to then start going downwards with your thumb. Okay, so the idea with this glissando is that there's not really going to be any um, gap in the sound. So you're going to try and close that gap by going uphill, opening up that finger and starting the finger before the thumb finishes. So let me show you what I mean. your finger is going to start to kind of close in like your hand will as your finger comes up and the uh, and the thumb starts plucking it does kind of do that a little bit and that's okay and that's just to help us close the gap in the sound and as you get to the top your hand is going to kind of tilt a little bit so that you can finish that bottom of the infinity sign and start with the thumb this is something that really takes quite a bit of practice to get it nice and smooth sounding and to be honest I could put more practice into this too. It's just that I don't do a lot of glissandos these days. Um, it's not my favorite sound in the whole world but I know a lot of you out there love the sound of glissandos so I'm sure you're going to be end up being a glissando expert way past the point of what I am. Um, but let's try it again and remember as you get to the bottom you bring that, that finger up and then you come up and you go extra uphill and then you bring that thumb down so let's try it together going downwards go up as many times as you want to you don't have to do it that exact number of times you could just go once down and up down and up or you could do it 10 times you could go as long as you want to until eventually the person you're trying to impress walks out the room and you can stop <laughs> an extra little note I just wanted to show you what a glissando looks like in sheet music so an upwards glissando looks like an uphill line like this and a downwards 
glissando is like a downwards um, kind of line in the sheet music and a lot of the time it's not really indicated which note it starts or ends on and that means you can just kind of start approximately where the line begins in your sheet music and end kind of like a roundabout so if it's a really long line you might start low down and end very high up if it's a shorter line you might make it a bit shorter but we're keeping it very general today there all are also a lot of situations where a glissando will be indicated that it starts on a particular note and ends on a particular note but we're not looking at that today because I want you to just be free and practicing the right motion of glissandos and not worrying about those tiny details for now. Well done for all your glissando work now go and practice those glissandos until you feel so confident make sure you do it with a wonderful um, posture where you just look very impressive and never tell people that glissandos are easy because that will just take the magic out of it let them just think that you happen to be a harp genius who's an expert so quickly <laughs> um, and if you enjoyed today's video and you want to build some more of your foundational harp skills then make sure you watch that video over there I'd love to see you there and then if you want to see more of my videos make sure you subscribe the buttons just down there and um, also click to receive notifications so that every time I upload a new video YouTube will tell you about it and then I'll see you in the next video bye